So I just came across a new product by the makers of WP Remote, Blog Vault, Malcare. It's called Airlift, and it claims to be able to improve your website performance with just one click. So I thought today we'd put it to the test. Now I've never used this plugin before, and I'm gonna be testing it for the first time live inside this video. Of course, anytime you're doing big performance improvements to a website, you're gonna need to do a lot of testing. This video doesn't go into the deep scientific studies of how this plugin works, or if it's gonna work across multiple sites. It's really just meant to be a first look at how to get started with this plugin. I have a website here that was built with Elementor and as you can see is not doing very well in terms of performance. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up for Airlift live here in this video. We'll put it through the paces and see if we can really improve the performance without breaking the website. I am a little bit skeptical but I'm willing to see if it works. So let's go ahead and sign up for Airlift. Here I'm going to go ahead and give it my email address, a password, and we'll hit sign up. Here, I need to enter the site URL to get started. I'll go ahead and copy and paste that site URL in, and we'll go ahead and download the plugin. I'll download it to my downloads folder and log into the website so we can install that plugin. Here, I'll go to plugins, add new, upload plugin, and we'll upload the Airlift plugin I just downloaded. Installed, now activate it. And this is taking us back to the Airlift website where it's syncing the site here. And from my understanding, what this is gonna do is create some kind of static version of the website. Now, that does worry me a little bit in terms of will it break anything on the website? So we're gonna to have to go through the website and see if anything's broken, but I'll let this go ahead and do its process. I'll pause the video here and pick up as soon as it's completed. Okay, so the whole process ended up taking about four minutes to complete, and as soon as it was done, I was redirected to this screen, which shows some before and after metrics. Of course, we're gonna test all these out ourselves, but let's take a look at what the page says. It says before, the page size was 3.5 megabytes, still the same size afterwards, although it was reduced by 0.29%. The request count went from 75 down to 69, so that was an 8% increase. Those don't seem like huge numbers, but that doesn't tell us the entire picture. It does look like the images are still being optimized in the background, so we might need to wait to test this until that's done. But let's take a look at what all it's done. It looks like image resizing, WebP conversion, image lazy loading, optimizing images, and size, which I'm not sure exactly what that means. It looks like it's taking care of used and unused CSS, critical CSS, minifying CSS. It's copied everything over to a CDN, and it's deferring the, the CSS. Here in JavaScript, it looks like it's delayed 30 bits of JavaScript. It didn't look like it minified anything, but it's copied all that over to a CDN as well. It looks like it's optimized Google Fonts and copied that over to a CDN. Here in the other features, we have compression, CDN integration, iframe lazy loading, page caching, and lighthouse reporting. So if we look at here, this web vital improvement, we see a score of 57 before and an optimized site of 57, which worries me a little bit because that doesn't seem like it went up very much. Of course, our original test actually showed that it was scoring a 28, but here on this dashboard, it's showing that it was originally a 57. Here we can see a breakdown of the score comparison on first contentful paint from 59 to 62, largest contentful paint one to zero, I'm guessing that's seconds, cumulative layout shift didn't change, the speed index went from six to eight, and the total blocking time went from 89 to 86. Of course, these don't have any kind of details on it, so it's hard to know exactly. What we offer different from others, viewport images identification and optimization, dynamic used CSS calculation, images resizing and load as per screen size, dynamic image optimization, and Google font handling. So a lot of these things are things I'm already doing inside of Perf Matters. Of course, with Perf Matters, we have to configure all those things, which makes sense to me. It seems like that would be hard to do all of this automatically, but I'm open to the idea. Now it does look like it's still optimizing images and pages. Let's go ahead and run another speed test and then we'll wait for that process to complete and we can run another one. So it does look like I went up from a 28 to a 34, not quite the high number I was looking for, but no doubt an improvement. Let's go back to our dashboard here and I'll wait for these optimizing pages and images to complete and we'll run those tests again. I'll go ahead and pause the video at this point. 
Okay, after another five minutes or so, it looks like images optimized shows 35 and pages optimized shows eight. So I'm guessing the entire process is completed now. So with that done, let's go ahead and run another speed test and see if we have better results once those images and pages have finished optimizing. And that's actually a pretty dramatic improvement. We went from a 28 on performance to an 83 once the process completed. Now, the real question is, is the website still functioning properly? Now, it's probably best if I go ahead and do this in an incognito window since I'm not logged in and we'll go ahead and enter that. Now it does look like my animations are still working. The video embed is still coming through. I can see things lazy loading a little bit in the background, but that doesn't bother me too much. And this site's fairly static. It does have a contact form, which I'll need to test out, but so far everything else seems to be working just fine here in the contact form. I'm gonna test that off screen because I'm gonna make sure that I don't alert my client to me running these tests. Looks like things like our maps embeds are still working perfectly fine. So, so far nothing obvious is broken, which is definitely a great sign. Of course, I'm gonna wanna do a lot more testing before I put this into production, but it was encouraging to see just how easy it was to sign up install the plugin, and it took care of all the optimizations for me. I definitely wanna dig into more about exactly what it's doing so I can get a better understanding before I ever use this on a real client site. However, I am pretty pleased with the results I got straight out of the box. I'd be curious to know if this is something you're testing out as well, so if you have, definitely leave those comments down below in the video description, because I'd love to hear about your experiences as well. Since I know the makers of this plugin, I will definitely follow up with them and get their thoughts. Maybe we can even bring them on for a webinar to learn more about how that works. If this is something you're interested, let me know about that as well. Hopefully you got some value out of this video. Make sure to hit subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.